Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today, and today we're going to be hooking up some Ubiquiti Wi-Fi extenders. Now these are wired, meaning that they're way better than using a lot of them. Now if you're trying to upgrade, there's obviously some other options, like you do have mesh networking if you don't have wired data ports everywhere, but I wanted wired because it's more thorough, as I would say. It's definitely a cleaner connection in my opinion, but let's show you what we're working with today. This is the Ubiquiti Pro. There's also the light, there's the long range. You can go with whichever one you want. I picked up two of these today and we're gonna put these throughout the house. Now, other things that I would recommend getting when you get this, make sure the one that you order comes with a PoE because you do have to use a PoE so you can power this. Uh, that would be my recommendation anyway. Now you can either put these in your smart panel downstairs or I'll show you how I'll be wiring mine today. Uh, this, so we can mount it to the wall, so that way it just kind of hangs on the wall there. And so, we all, I also purchased the cloud key. Now, the reason why is this adds to your price. It's like an extra 100 and something bucks, or just 100, depending Canada or America. But um, what this allows you to do is actually seamlessly set the stuff up through a Google Chrome app. Uh, makes it a lot easier than trying to use the desktop software. So, this will be the last thing I touch. Right now, I want to get these situated. Now, if you look here, I have a data plug already here. So, what I'm going to be doing is mounting this one, same hot as my thermostat there uh, for my fireplace, but I'm going to do that right here. And I'm going to feed that wire down to here with a fish tape. That's going to come through and plug into my switch. So, it's going to go switch, PoE, and then up into the access point. Show you what it looks like here in a second. So if you're gonna just mount the ring over that box, you can always do that too. Just make sure you mount it off to the side. So what you do is use your stud finder. If, it, uh, if the box isn't big enough, and you'll notice that, okay, there's a stud here. So you can mount that mounting ring right here and it'll circle over this and your data can just come up into the port and you can tuck in that and then you can just take this keystone out and go right into it. Up here, as you can see, I've done this. Boom, okay, center of the stud. So I'm gonna mount my mounting ring right here. And then after I mount the mounting ring. So, checked here, wood, wood. Now you have this big open circle. Well, that's how I'm gonna be able to reach my hand in when I send my fish tape up to here. So what do I do? Grab a screwdriver, go all the way around. Now you can either do two things. There's gonna be a stud right about here. So you can cut right here all the way till you hit the stud and then you can cut all the way here until you get the stud. Be careful if this is above your data like mine is, because you don't want to hit that data line. So you might want to actually stop a little earlier, like right here. And what I would do is basically go here, cut this out, and see if you can get your hand in. Because you're going to have to reach in here to pull that wire, because that box is sealed. Especially if it's an outside wall. If it's an inside wall, no problem. So, now that we have this like this, I'm going to take my uh, drywall saw and I'm going to cut out this little circle right here So as you can see we can now reach in here now and move around and do our thing So now that we can do that we can reach down here We're gonna have to put in Our line down to here now to do that You need a hook pick if you've got it. I'm gonna get down And what you want to do so you're basically, I'm going to show you down here, but you're going to hook it and bend it out. You're going to do that up here. So, let's see if I can show you. Just like that. And you just bend this down. And you basically want to fold that over, so that way, when you fold it over, you'll be able to uh, fish your wire up that hole to that hole. And this is how I do it. I have just regular old fishing wire. Some people like to use chicken wire or whatever else, but you can do whatever you'd like. Literally, after I started cramming, I just followed it along the stud. That's the best way, is make it glide along a stud, and then it slid up, and look at that. It's best if you have two people because one person can stick their hand in and grab it. Now that we've got this, you can either pull through an already made uh, Cat 6 cable, or you can make your own 
if you know how and pull in raw wire. So I just made my dad a cable. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do that because there's enough videos online, including mine, I have one on crimping data. So now that we have it, um, make sure that they match. If you have a cable tester, test your cable. And we'll leave this down here. Let's go and mount this. After we get our access point mounted, then we can come down here and we can finish up. The screws that it came with sucked, so I used my own. These are just drywall screws, don't have a size for you, but yeah, um, using them, they go right into the stud. Holds this nice and close. If you want to, these won't be supportive, but if you want to get something, uh, use something with an aggressive thread, even this, and just put these in here. This isn't going to support it, but what it's going to do is, and don't over tighten this, just do it with a screwdriver till it hits, and that's going to press this into here to so you don't get any lip or rattle or anything like that make sure you do them straight on and the reason why is you don't want to lip on them otherwise you won't be able to lock your access point on once you've got your ring mounted like so if you want to hook it up to main slide it on and turn it it only goes on one way it should go on something like this then it slides down so it's upright and then you're good to go just put it on after that now I'm going to tuck some wire in here because I did a whole bunch because I wanted extra just in case I had to pull some out or whatever. So I'm gonna slide that through my plate now so it's sticking out, it'll go into my POE. So if you're looking at this switch, you'll see one says LAN, one says POE. POE is going to go to the access point because we need the power over ethernet and LAN is going to go into your switch or into directly into the wall outlet or this goes right to your router. Right here, PoE injector, plug it in. Like I said, red PoE goes up to the access point, black goes to your LAN going to your router. If you look real carefully, you see there's a light blue haze to it. Perfect. All right, so you can see we have the other access point mounted. I didn't bother showing you that one because it's the exact same method, but I put it in front of my networking closet if you look here. So this is my network closet. This is my router. Uh, I've already toned out and found out where the other one is, and I've also plugged in this one. Again, I'm going to clean this up. I'm just leaving it loose right now so I can test everything. So the next thing you need to do is open your cloud key. Once you open your cloud key, set it up like so. There is a miniature SD, oh, plug it in the right way, let's see, yeah, just like that, sinks all the way in, once it does that, it gives you one of these, this is your, one of your connectors, Se hold separately PoE injector, again, yeah. have to buy that separately, some people say you can power this with the uh, C adapter, so this is the PoE that is currently going to my switch, this is the cloud key. All I used was a, your regular old C charger from C to C, and that was it. Once you've plugged this in, plugged in either USB-C adapter or done another PoE that goes into here, um, what's gonna end up happening now is you'll press power. It'll blink for a while. Once it's finished blinking, make sure you have that micro SD in. Um, let that light go solid after it has. Let's go to a computer that's connected to the network. Tell them what to do next. Alright, so once your puppy is sitting on your knee, or head on the knee, go to Google Chrome. Once it's open, if you look at your cloud key here, it's going to give you an address to put in. Put this address in, and then you got to go create an account. Once you got your mouse going here, and you've created your account, which is super easy, You'll click right here, add new cloud controller setup, and go from here. So, first you want to go up here to discover, click on, say add to Chrome, add to Chrome, add app. Look at that, boom. Next thing you're going to want to do, launch app. You're like, oh no, you're hitting scan and you can't find anything, you're freaking out. You hit Unify Family. Look at this, pending and pending, action. So after you've gone through here, launch the app, Unify Family, you'll see everything's popped up now. Sweet, right? Okay, next thing you're gonna do is go back here. You're gonna notice that it might be on access points, which is the little round disc right here. You wanna go up here to controller. 
Now you'll see your controller right here. This is a demo one, which we don't want. We want the Unify Cloud Controller version 3 right here. And we're going to press. You can either adopt right now or upgrade firmware. I might just do that. And look, there's a firmware update. Update firmware. Downloading file. I would suggest you just update the firmware first. Let it do its upgrade. After we do the upgrade, then we will adopt it. Next thing you're going to want to do is press adopt after that software update. Open controller wizard. If it pops up like it did for me at the very bottom, you have to click down here and then say uh, proceed to the wizard. It might say that's unsafe, just do it. After you do that, you can do enable auto backup. Depending where you live, set this location and set your time zone. For me, it's going to be Canada. Oh, not Cambodia. My mouse is so sensitive right now. And then we need to go to Pacific, which is like negative eight or seven right now. Which is basically Los Angeles. There is Vancouver. Okay. Next, it's going to find some devices. Select the devices you would like to configure. We're going to click this and this because we want both of them. Uh, adopt and upgrade. Confirm. Now we're going to set our secure SSID and security key. I'm going to do that right now and I'm not going to bother with a guest network. If you're at home and you guys don't do a whole lot of really deep stuff business wise, you don't need a guest network. But if you're really scared and you guys have like a lot of secure things, maybe you have a recipe you never want to go away and you don't trust the people coming to your house you can make them a guest network but if you don't care who's on your network and you just want access to everyone throw it in there what I would say is like let's say you're running an Airbnb or you have tenants I would make yours the main and then enable guest access and put all your tenants on there or your Airbnbs so that way they can't access your computers on the network and stuff like that so that way you have two individual networks. Very important to note because you just, that's how you would separate it. Otherwise your tenants could technically, if you have a Google Chromecast, turn off what you're watching and everything like that. I went through all these steps, except for the last one where it told me to enter my ubnt.com account credentials. I didn't even put that in. I just skipped it. Uh, I pressed skip I because I, just didn't want to mess with it. After I did, then it pops up with a little screen here that starts advertising about everything their software does. Press the little X and look at this. After you do that, don't be freaked out. Usually everything just doesn't show up for about five minutes because everything doesn't update. After you do that, let's scroll up on here. Let's do a speed test or well, first connect to your network. You would go here and you would see Nomad for me because that's what I called my network. After I do that, I would go to speed test. Check this out. I already did one, but watch this. Press go. Look at that. Woof. For my phone, it's always been wonky. We just did uh, my friend's phone beside me, Tariq's, and it was completely pegged the whole way. Like, look at that. It's just stepping it up. So it ended at 165. Look at my upload. It actually just bounced off 80 for a second. What the? The fastest I've gotten yet is 175, 175. And again, we aren't even that close to one of the access points. My office is actually on the other side, but I have direct lines in here. So usually my laptops and stuff, I directly cut, connect in. But yeah, it's got this cool little activity you can go through. It'll show us everything. The five, everything like that. It's showing us the channels it's on. Uh, if we do that, then we can also go to statistics. Wow, 1.59 gigabytes of traffic right now. Um, I think my, yeah, it's doing really well. It's got two clients. Most active client, 465 down. I was trying to do some uh, stuff here, devices. This just says the access points, says everything's up to date. 
clients, it's all the same. Look at this, Wi-Fi experience, 92% from this one and 100% from that one. Oh, and these are the other networks in the area. So all in all, play around with it. Just wanted to show you how I built my network. And again, this is how it all works. Again, there's little other devices you can add. Like if you're wanting better security, you can add their security key. Uh, as you can see, it's saying no unified security gateway detected. So that's for protecting your network if you're not using certain protectors. I'm using a built-in TELUS protector. Another thing I will tell you to do now is after you've done that, go to your router. I'm gonna show you this, or I'm not gonna show you this part, but if you go to your router on the side, you're gonna see a way to log in. It's gonna tell you a IP address to go to. Um, it looks something like this sticker. I don't mind showing you because I've changed all this. But yeah, you're basically gonna to go to these and you're going to change, um, you're gonna go into this right here, so for example, admin settings, you go to that Wi-Fi link after you or your you put that into your URL on here. After you do that, log in with those two credentials. After you do that, turn off the Wi-Fi settings on your router. You will actually see a Wi-Fi management. Click on it, go to 5G and 2.4. Make sure you turn them both off. You do not want to have those active. If you do, things that might happen are you might get actually confliction because of the fact that there's more signals bouncing around the house. The less amount of signals bouncing around your place, the better. That's the reason why signals are so bad in condos is because everyone's got their own internet and their Wi-Fi and it just annihilates each other because there's so much signal being bounced around. Anyways, right now, go on, go disable that. You should be good to go. I hope this helped you see how to do this. Again, if you do it this way, this is the free way. If you're doing the enterprise way where you want to do like cloud, which is remote settings and blah, 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 it does cost you more money. Also, if you do more than 10 devices and a whole bunch of other things. But um, that's all there is to it. Thanks again for watching. Press like if it helped you out. Subscribe for more. By the way, you can do this without that little cloud piece I put in. I would highly suggest you do it with the cloud piece because it makes life a lot easier. There's a software download version and you can try and manage it. I've heard it's a nightmare. So if you wanna go try and manage it with that, you go right ahead. I just wanted to show you guys the easiest way. Yes, it costs about a hundred bucks more, but it's well worth it. Perfect, thanks again for watching. So the last part of this is going to be to go in here, you can go to this Wi-Fi setup icon, disable radio signal. If you're using Shaw, make sure you disable both. One thing I will warn you about TELUS, if you have wireless boxes in the house and you disable it using the Wi-Fi setup here, the problem is your wireless boxes will quit communicating with the main box. So you, in that case, you would have to leave the wireless setup on. 